Hi, welcome back to the Keto's PKI series where we teach you the basics about PKI. Today we're going to look at something that usually gets overlooked and those are certificate revocation lists. So I like starting this one with a story. Let's picture you hire someone, you give them a certificate for two years and then they leave the company after a year. You don't want that certificate to still be valid for another year and that's where certificate of revocation list comes up. The certificate authority actually publishes a revocation list on a certain cadence and then when you're validating that certificate you're supposed to look at that list. One of the common mistakes we see here is organizations publishing krills very often. Let's say they say like well like I want it every day and then you ask them how often do you actually revoke a certificate and they say yeah maybe every six months. It's not worth publishing every day because if that krill is not up or up to date it'll actually cause an outage because the entity that is checking a certificate if the krill is down it will actually fail to validate the certificate because it couldn't get to the krill so in here it's very important to keep kind of like a normal krill cadence the the accepted industry standard is actually seven days and in between you can issue Delta Krills that are just kind of like additions of like new certificates that have been revoked in that time space. The problem with Krills is they can get very large if you revoke many certificates for some reason. You should look if you're revoking many certificates that not be that might be a problem with how long your certificates are actually and you might want to make that a shorter certificate lifespan but with now iot devices and routers and everything using certificates there's a other way that you could do it so basically ocsp basically what it does is it's a server that reads the certificate revocation list and will act as a yes no server so instead of having all your applications on the network download the krill that can become large and actually affect your network performance or not be able to be read by smaller computers. OCSP will take care of all that and then the clients will just go to the OCSP server and say, hey, is this certificate valid? OCSP is gonna look at the krill, make sure that the certificate is not in the krill and it will respond either yes or no. And you can either have a OCSP stapling. So the OCSP signs each request and it's usually valid for a few days. So sometimes what servers do to avoid that round trip, they say, hey, here's my certificate and here's an OCSP response valid for this time period that says that this certificate is valid. So that's how you manage certificate revocation. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.